In this problem, Donald Trump throws a small rock 5 meters per second, 45 degrees, at a basket of kittens, and Megyn Kelly asks, when is the rock in circular motion? And in that circular motion, what are the centripetal acceleration and the radius? And Trump says, well, what are you talking about circular motion? I threw a rock, I threw it in a perfect projectile trajectory at the kittens. Threw it from here, uh, 5 meters per second, 45 degrees, and we know what it'll do. It'll make a parabola, not a circle, and it'll hit the basket of kittens, and one of the kittens died, actually. So how could you ever ask a question about circular motion? And Megan Kelly says, no, when is it in circular motion? So if you're confused by a problem like this, usually just start drawing. Just pick a point. Is it in circular motion here? Well, let's see, I'm gonna draw, I guess, the velocity vector. There's velocity, and there's acceleration. That's the acceleration of gravity straight down. And you could pick a point over here. Where's the velocity vector? It's like that, along the motion. Gravity, down, doesn't look like circular motion. I could draw it here. Velocity is straight over. Velocity vector that way, gravity straight down. And then hopefully it would click. Megan Kelly didn't say it's in uniform circular motion. The question is at what point in time is it executing circular motion? And technically, at this instant, you do have the velocity horizontal. The vertical components of the velocity have all gone to zero because of the acceleration down. So you have velocity only horizontal and gravitational acceleration is perpendicular to it. And that's the definition of circular motion when velocity and gravity, or when velocity and acceleration are perpendicular. So you could argue that at that moment, it is in circular motion. So that's the answer to the first part is when is it in circular motion at the apex? So we'll say part A at the apex of its motion. But then Megan Kelly wants to know what are the centripetal acceleration and the radius? Well, if we just imagine this is circular motion, kind of like this, the centripetal acceleration is just the acceleration due to gravity, pointing straight down. So B, A, C, it's equal to G. It's equal to negative 9.8, negative 9.8, um, I hat meters per second squared. If we go ahead and define the y-axis as positive pointing up. And you may say, that's not centripetal. It won't stay with a circle. You know, the reason it makes a parabola and not a circle is that acceleration doesn't continue. But we're just talking about one point in time. So at one point in time, if you imagine this is circular motion, then g would be the acceleration. And then finally, uh, what's the radius? c. Well, we have the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration, and we have the speed, the magnitude of the velocity, so we can get that. So let's see. The horizontal velocity at this point in time would be the same thing it is here. So the magnitude of the speed there is 5 times the cosine of 45 degrees. It's just the initial x component. So we put that together with, let's see, the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration. We're just doing magnitudes here. It's uh, v squared over r over the radius of the circle. So there you can get the radius of the circle. Right? So this is 9.8 equals... Um, 5 times uh, cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2, so it would be 5 times the square root of 2 over 2 squared over r. So you just get this number and divide it by 9.8. Bring the r to the other side, and you get 1.28 meters. So the radius of the imaginary circle of this, at this one instant, with the equivalent of the circular motion, would have a radius of 1.28. So it is technically circular motion just at an instant.